Hey, welcome back to Linode. My name is Austin Gill, and in this series, we are building full stack applications with Remix, Prisma, and SQL databases. In the previous videos, we covered setting up the project, making sure we have all the dependencies installed, and running through all of the basic CRUD operations. Let's create, read, update, delete on our database. Yeah! But we also introduced a few flaws. No! Going back to the homepage, you may have caught the issue before, but since then I have taken some time to add a couple more entries into our pet database. Now on the homepage, we are listing all of the pets in the database, which may seem like a good idea. But as I mentioned in the introductory video, my neighborhood has a lot of pets. And that raises the question, what would happen if we were to add a lot of pets into our database and try to list them all on the single page? Well, the request is probably going to take a long time to load. It may completely fail to load. And even if we do get a valid response, it's going to be so much data on the page that it could be overwhelming for users, especially if they know exactly what they're looking for. So in this next video, we're going to be looking at adding better features for listing content and limiting the amount of data on a page using filters, pagination, and we'll even tackle some sorting. So I think we'll start by adding a search form to our page. That way, if anyone shows up and kind of knows what they're searching for, they can find it much more quickly. Okay, so let's get back into our code base. We'll open up the app folder. And because we wanna make edits to the home page, we'll modify the routes index.js file. I think it's gonna make sense to have the form just right above the grid, so let's do that. And because we're going to be capturing data, we're going to be using a form. Now, if we remember from the previous videos, the HTML form works great uh, on its own, but we probably want to use one of the forms that, uh, components that's provided for us from Remix so that we get some of the nicer user experience features. So we come here, we're gonna import the form component and we'll put it there. Next, we also want to decide where that form is going to submit its data uh, or submit the send the submission. And I think it's fine to send that submission to this same page. Now, what we want to do is actually have this form send the form submission as a Git request. We could use, well, let's build out the form first before we get into all that. So I'm going to use my custom little input component that we looked at before. We already have that available here. Uh, and then I'm going to give that input a name. I'm gonna call it something like search and I'm going to give it a label and we're going to give it a label of search and then we're gonna give it an ID and that ID is also going to be search. Now we also need the submit button. So we'll do the BTN. If I do this, it's gonna automatically, nope, not, not gonna import it for me, that's all right. But I am going to import that here and give that a type equal to submit. And then we're gonna give this, uh, I guess we'll fill it out with just search. Cool, there's my form. Here's the label, there's my input, there's my button. Now we need to decide if we want this form to send the data as a Git request or as a post request. So if I submit right now, we'll see that we get the search field appended as a query string parameter if we leave it with the Git fault, the, <laughs> the default uh, action or method, which is Git. So we could say method equals get or method equals post uh, uppercase lowercase doesn't really actually matter and if we send it as a post request and we get rid of this url we can see the network request uh, the 405 method is not allowed of course that's because we did not implement the action but in my case i think it's going to make more sense to just leave that as a get request the reason being that if someone wanted to submit something like Nugget and do a search, 
using a using the get request here is actually a really nice feature because when I submit that, once we implement the search uh, feature, we'll see just the limited results. But the nice thing is that when we use a get request, that data is appended to the URL, which means if I wanted to, I could bookmark this or I could copy it and send it to someone else. Whereas if we rely on post data, there's no way to really share that with someone else. Now there's a really important security concern we need to discuss when creating uh, forms. If you're ever going to be sending potentially sensitive data like credit card information or login credentials, you should never use a GET request. The reason being that all of those nice features that we get from using a GET request, including bookmarkability or shareability, uh, those can become attack vectors. If you're using publicly shareable information, it might be better to use a GET request. That way you have the user experience benefits of having the data appended to the URL. If you are dealing with anything that is private or needs to be secure, always use a POST request. Okay, so back on our form. Since we are submitting this data as a GET request, we can actually access this information from within the loader function. So we can grab the information of the request off of the loader parameters. So get that request object. And on that request object, we'll be able to pull off the URL. So const URL equals, I'll, cre I'll create a new URL object using the request.url. From that URL, I can grab the search parameters. So I'll say const query equals uh, URL dot search params. That's going to give me a search parameters object. And then from here, we can check if the uh, search field has been submitted in the request. So let's just say uh, console log query dot get, and then we'll pass in the field. So the search field, and I'll give this a little flag search. There we go. Wrote that wrong. That should not be a function. That is a property. Cool. So now if we reload, we can see that our application loaded. And if we look at our console, we can see that the search field was submitted with the string nugget. Awesome. So now that we have the actual search query string, how do we apply a filter to say, hey, grab all of the entries in the database where the name matches whatever we're searching for? And we can do that with a where clause. So in SQL, we would wanna write something like, select all from pet where the name column equals and then whatever string we're searching for. In Prisma, we can accomplish the same thing by passing a parameters object to this function. So we can pass in an object and then it's going to give us some options that we can choose. So we wanna use a where clause and that can also be an object. And there's a number of different syntaxes we can use, but because we wanna do uh, an equality check, we can just say where the name is equal to query.get and the search string. Now, if we go back to our application, it automatically reloaded. It saw that the search string was nugget. There's only one entry with the name nugget. So that's what we get in return. Now, what happens if we go to the page without any search string? We're gonna get an error because the search is going to be null. So what I like to do instead is actually pull out these parameters into an object that I can say uh, something like options. Options. Then I can instantiate that variable with just the default value. Const options equals that. So then I can do a conditional to check if the if the query is defined dot. Then we can assign the value for the options. We can say options dot where oops where equals that object where the name corresponds to the query dot get search. So now if we do a search for nugget and we submit it, we'll see that we just get nugget. If we go back to the homepage, 
we get everyone because the search is undefined. But if I do a search for Nug, I'm not gonna see anything. And that's because our query is actually doing an equal comparison, meaning it has to match exactly what we're searching for. Now in reality, we probably wanna do something that's a little bit looser to maybe just say if, uh, I, I wanna see all the, all the results where my search string is contained within the name. So we can do that by changing our SQL query to instead of be, uh, being an equal comparison, we can say something is like our search filters where the name is like our query. So the syntax for using the like operator is you actually wanna pass in a string with single quotes and then you can pass in what you're searching for. So I could search for uh, nug or nugget or whatever. So in this case, let's search for anything with the letter E. Now, if I do a comparison for just the string E, that's going to be the same as an equal comparison. What I really wanna tell SQL is I want to have some wild cards that could either be uh, any, any characters before, any characters after, or if the E is anywhere within the word. So if we wanted to do a search that begins with the letter E, we would use the wild card uh, character here after the letter E. So we say start with E and then anything after is fine. Or if we wanted to end with E, we can say anything uh, before this letter E, find any, any columns that have any characters before this letter E. And because we wanna do, we wanna do a search for any pet whose name contains the letter E anywhere in it, beginning, end, in the middle, we'll use both of the wildcards wrapping our search string like that. Now in Prisma, it's pretty easy to do this as well. Instead of passing an, uh, instead of assigning the value to the name property, we can actually change that to be an object. And we can pass in a property called contains. And this will tell Prisma, hey, I want you to use this syntax. So use the like operator and have these, uh, these wildcards before and after the search string. So we'll replace that with a question mark and we can do our search now. So now, because I did a search for Nug, we can see that Nugget is there. If I go back home, I can do a search for anyone with the letter E in their name. Uh, perfect, we get a limited result. And then we also get something interesting if I do a search for anyone with the letter N. So we'll notice that nugget is not there. And that's because I did a search for the string n lowercase. And by default, Prisma is going to use a case sensitive search. If we want to do a case insensitive search, we can tell Prisma that we want the mode to be ins insensitive. I think I spelled that right. Which means if we go back to our result and we have the search for the letter N, Nugget is back in there. Now there's a really important point that I need to make here is this works if you're using uh, Postgres. If you are using SQLite, then the case insensitive support is not quite there. So you may be stuck for only supporting the case sensitive options. But like I said before, that's only going to be in this initial development mode. And then once you actually deploy, you can implement the case insensitive version. Okay, so the search is working pretty well. We can search for anything with the letter A in it, and that's fine and all good. Uh, there's a couple other things that I wanna do just to sort of button up this experience for users. First of all, I don't love that the layout looks like this. I also feel like when you do a search for something, if you reload the page or were to share that page with someone else, I'd really like that search string to remain in there. Okay, so let's get that uh, search string in there first. So I want to be able to pass in a default value here on this input. And the question is, how do I get that information? Well, the information we can pull right from the URL uh, because it should be available there. However, the in order to get that information, you might think to use window.location, but because Remix works on both the client and the server side, the server side won't actually know what window is. And there are ways to detect if you're only on the client side, do some logic, but then you end up with uh, a disparity between what was generated on the server side and what was generated on the client side. So to solve that, the Remix team actually provides you with another hook called use search params. We can say const 
and we can say search params is going to be the result equals use search params thank you very much i think that should have been imported yeah there it is and then that is just going to be another uh, search params object so we can actually do something here and say that the default value is going to be uh, if you use search params dot has search and we can do a ternary and we can say it'll be use params dot get search uh, otherwise it can just be an empty string oh i think that's a slight difference in their api well in that case we can actually just simplify this even more and just say we can say it's going to be uh, use search params oh no i see i used the hook instead of the actual value so we'll say search params dot has and search params dot get and if we reload there we can see that it's working we have our previous search put in there so i can say nug and i can reload as many times as i want and it still works now i think i can actually even simplify this further and just say uh, go ahead and default to that and if it's a truthy value with we'll use it and if not uh, we can fall okay now let's also make this form look a little bit nicer i really just need to put them put the input and button on the same uh row so i'm going to say go to this form and give it a class name equal to flex with a gap of four let's take a look at that okay kind of worse actually but it's okay we're working on it uh, I'm going to also align the items to the end okay looking better and then I really just need this input to have uh, a flex girl on it so class name is going to be equal to flex grow all right it's looking pretty good I'm happy with that now I want to make sure that my responsive styles look good on a small screen I'd probably say eh, we could maybe like uh, wrap these on a smaller screen. So I'm gonna say, instead of grid, this is going to be display, or instead of flex, this is gonna be display grid, and then only on small screens will it be flex. And then if we look at that, that's looking a little bit better. Big old button on small screens, and then we get a nice experience on larger screens. Pretty good. All right, search is looking good. Good on you for getting it done. Once again, if you are new to Linode and you want to check out some of the products, including compute products or the managed database, uh, you can hit that link in the description to sign up for a new account and you'll get $100 of credit to check everything out uh, in the first 60 days. So be sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to be notified when the next video comes out.